Hi, guys, and welcome back to a Midday Matcha with Livy. Clearly, I am fucking Livy. All right, you guys, how is everybody doing this week? Me personally, I'm good. You know, okay, actually, I don't think I should have put this in there, and I don't think I really want to put this in, but like something happened with one of my best friends, and like I'm just genuinely upset like I didn't get in a fight just something happened to her and it's just making me so sad it's like breaking my heart so I'm just a little bit like weirdly emotional because you know I'm an empath if you know you know I am a fucking empath which like I feel other people's emotions and like so so slay of me but at the same time like I don't know it's like breaking my heart it's kind of the only thing that's been on my mind today and I just love to take care of people and I love to like heal people which is like obviously like not the best trait of mine but like I don't know I'm just like really upset about that today I'm not gonna lie and she's gonna listen to this and be like Livy what the fuck but it's like I love you bitch and I feel your feelings so that is that so it's like I don't think I could have like continued on with the podcast especially because we're talking about dating today without me being like disclaimer I really want to light somebody on fire right now okay so that's just where I'm at but like that's her situation not mine I can't make it about me I just hate seeing my friends in really unfortunate situations like I think that really just like breaks my heart and soul and I hate 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 seeing that so yeah all right you guys what else did I do this week I joined Equinox that was a big (laughs) that was a big step for me because when I first moved to New York it's been a year since tomorrow will be a year since I've moved to New York and my sister flies out tomorrow to view apartments to move to New York to literally I always say I'm like she's moving here for me because she's going to work for me eventually but also just because she loves New York City but like I'm a little bit selfish and I'm like she's moving here because of me which like is she I don't know no she is to work for me so it's crazy that like she's flying out a year later on the exact date that I moved to New York to view apartments to literally live five minutes away from me too I just it's honestly it's insane I don't know it makes me so emotional because it's just been it's just been such a year it's been such a past three couple fucking months I feel like that's when everything really started kicking in and like my life has just changed completely is every podcast episode am I gonna just be like my life has just changed completely but it's just so fucking weird how things change so quickly and just to see her fly out and apartment hunt and do what I did like it's just so crazy on the exact day that I moved to New York motherfucking city That's crazy to me. So I'm excited to have her in New York with me. She'll be like officially moved in like a month from now. And then all of my best friends, I'm sure I talked about this a lot too. Cause like if I'm excited about something in my life, you're probably going to hear about it a million fucking times. But all my best friends are flying in this weekend and we're all celebrating a million. I have the most gorgeous dress. I am so excited. I... I don't have words, but back to me joining Equinox. I used to do Equinox when I was in Chicago. If you don't know what Equinox is, it's like the bougiest of bougie gyms. And I'm a slut for a bougie gym. I've always said this. I will pop pussy for a bougie gym. It's just who I am as a woman because I love a nice gym because I'm there every day. Like that's where I spend majority. No, I don't spend majority of my time though. That's a lie. But I'm there all the time. So it's like, why would I not invest in like a nice gym? So there's that. Also, guys, we're back in studio. Last week, we weren't really in studio like I was, but you guys weren't here with me. And a lot of you commented on the YouTube because you guys can watch the full video on the YouTube. If you want to see how fucking gorgeous I am, go to the YouTube right now and watch. But a lot of you guys were like, yeah, no, we like your house a lot better. And it's like, bitches, let me know if you like me recording at home better like slide in my dms right now and be like we like the studio or we like you recording at home because i need to know these things okay i need to be aware of which ones you guys like better so i'm not breaking my bank account for i'm not breaking my bank account for this but like just let me know let a bitch know because i'm open to either actually that's not true i was so strict on coming back with the podcast being in studio i was like i better be in fucking studio and That was like one of my non-negotiables. So it's like, let me know if you guys would rather just see me in my home. Because like then I'll arrange that and that's fucking easy. But if you like in studio, let me know. Like, but I'm serious. If you're not DMing me, I'm going to get pissed. So let me know which ones you guys like more. So that's, oh, also you guys, I'm in my going out era. (laughs) So not really, um, but I did go out Friday night. I did a whole little story time on that about on my TikTok of like what my Friday night looked like. It honestly is like the same old, same old. It's like free drinks from old, weird fucking men. I feel like that's just the vibe of every time I go out. And 
sometimes they're not like old, but sometimes they are. I did go on a date last week, but like I really didn't look at it as a date. I just looked at it as I wanted red curry and Thai iced tea. And why not go with somebody else? You know what I mean? Why not do that? You know, so I guess I've been dating a little bit, but that's what kind of inspired this week's topic because... I decided to cut off all of my hoes this week. I want nothing to do with any of them anymore because I don't know. I just had like a weird spiritual awakening in the middle of the night a couple nights ago that I was like, you know what? All the hoes that I'm talking to, I know I don't want to be with long term. I know what I see myself with long term. So like, what the fuck am I doing settling just like talking to these men because I'm a little bit bored, you know, like what the fuck is the point of that? So that just sent me through a spiral, which inspired this episode where we're talking about dating in 2023 and just dating in general, like these past couple of years. It's been a fucking, it's been something. I don't know. Obviously, times have changed. I don't think I need to be the one to tell everyone times have fucking changed, but they really have. And I just feel like dating is so dumb and complicated these days. And like, I'm just not here for the dumbness of it all. Like, I'm really not. I don't like that at all. We're just overly complicated for no reason. Like we're going to talk about situationships, ghosting, how to have high standards while dating, first dates, all of it. Like I'm going to talk all about dating because a bitch has an opinion. If there's one thing about me, I have a fucking opinion and you're going to hear it today. But yeah, no, I'm just like, I think it's way too overly complicated for no fucking reason. Like it's just so simple. So I don't understand why we overcomplicate everything. It's because, honestly, we're in a generation full of whores. And these whores just want multiple options. And that's that. Am I talking specifically about the men? Obviously. So let's get into ghosting. Like, let's just talk about ghosting in general. Personally, I think if someone ghosts you, they are a little bitch, okay? Clearly, they have communication issues. Clearly, something's wrong with them. Because, like, <laughs> I say this and I realize I'm ghosting people right now. (laughs) Okay, that's like a realization I did not want to have on the podcast. But I'm not going to ghost them. I'm going to let them know. If they had reached out to me and been like, why aren't you talking to me? That's a lie too, Libby. Like, fuck, I'm just lying because I was going to say I would tell them why. The one I would tell why. The other one, I just, he annoys the fuck out of me. I'm like, how do I say, like, you're just annoying the fuck out of me, you know? So instead, I just said I'm busy with work, which I am. But you know what? Right. Okay. If I'm going to talk about these things, I need to preach them. Okay. So I need to also live it. But let's say my hoe reaches out to me and he's like, well, where have you been? I will be like, you're just not meeting the criteria I set up for myself. Like I have absolutely no problem saying that to somebody, but okay. Let's say you're getting ghosted. We'll talk about my problems in a moment. Okay. Whatever. Let's say you're talking to someone, you get ghosted. I personally think they're a little bitch if they ghost you. But on the flip side, I really hate when a motherfucker (laughs) is like, I don't see this working out because I've had both. And I don't like the I don't see this working out thing because I'm kind of like normally when that happens, I'm like, I didn't. It's only happened to me one time, but I'm like, I didn't even know we had anything going on. So now it just pissed me off even more that you're like, I don't see anything happening because I'm like, well, I would have tried a little bit harder if I knew we were fucking together. But at the same time. Being ghosted is never fun. I feel like it depends on situations why people are ghosting you. But overall, one, they have communication problems and they're a little bitch, which I guess I fall into that category as I'm currently ghosting people. But also, I just like don't want to be bothered. I'm in my healing era. Not really. I'm in my alone time era. Anyways, I just like... I think if someone ghosts you, there's a couple things that are happening. One, they found somebody else. Two, they're just not interested anymore. Three, you guys have been talking for a while and they know that the talk is coming. They know that you're going to be like, what are we sometime soon? Like they get the sense that that is coming, which like if you know me, you know that I am like strict on that fucking talk. Like I give someone a month max in my life to prove themselves to me. And after they prove themselves to me, depending on how things are going, I'll know like if I see them in my future, if I don't, because I'm like a quick one. I'm like, I know if I want a motherfucker in my life or I don't. So I'll have that talk. Like, I'm not scared to bring up the conversation of like, well, what are we? Where is this going? Because one thing I hate is my time being wasted. So you're never going to see me get my time wasted. I'll be like, where, what are we? Where is this going? What are we doing? And like, yeah, I get my answers and it hurts sometimes or sometimes it works out really well. But I just don't see any reason on like waiting to like see what we see what I am with somebody. But that's like another reason I feel like they ghost is because they know 
that talk's going to come sometime soon. And probably most people, I feel like, let that happen like three, six months to even like a year. Like they let the whole situationship dumb shit happen where it's like, don't it, we'll get we'll get into situationships because I fucking hate a situationship but that's the reasons why people are ghosting because like I think about why I ghost and like that's just it like normally I'm ghosting because like I just want better for myself and I'm like I don't think I should be settling with these people and like why am I gonna just be wasting my energy on all these people but also like I'm not in committed things with anybody you know like I'm not hooking up with these people it's nothing that serious whereas I've been in other things that are more serious and people ghost normally when they ghost they always come back but like don't get your hopes up on that because like you don't want to be with somebody who's in like escape thing I was gonna say escape era that's not it you don't want to be with somebody who ghosts because they're just showing you they're inconsistent they're showing you they're a piece of fucking shit they're showing you all the things that you don't want in somebody as I'm saying that I'm like bitch you're literally ghosting right now no I'm getting better about my ghosting I'm trying to just be a little bit more upfront and honest with people but then again I feel like when people when I am upfront and honest they're like trying to like well let me do this let me do that and it's like no it's just honestly you as a person I don't see it working out but that's why I think people well that's why I know people ghost I also asked men's opinion on this topic of like why do they ghost and this is the response that I got they don't want to talk to you anymore they're not interested so literally the same things I've been saying um this is dragged on long enough like kind of like the what are we talk is coming what I said they said the sex is bad is when they'll ghost but men are disgusting like if you're gonna Like, that's just, like, a whole different thing that I don't even want to get into because, like, you're a fucking asshole. Like, if the sex is bad and you ghost, like, just say, hey, I don't see this working out, you know? Especially when someone, like, I feel like once sex is involved, like, that's a really fucked up thing to ghost somebody after that. It's like, hey, I just don't see things working out, you know? I think that's way more respectful than, like, ghosting after someone you're giving each other like your bodies and stuff like I think that's way too intimate and I think then I think you're a pussy ass bitch if you ghost after you fucked I think that's really weird but yeah men were just saying um found something better that's why they'll ghost so basically the same things that I've been saying but I just think overall if you've been ghosted because I get that question a lot they're like Livy what do I do I've been ghosted and I did make a tiktok saying fuck his best friend which hey do, do it if you want but in all seriousness If they ghost you, let them go. You know, let them go. Let them fully leave. Let them walk out of your life because they're probably not worth it to begin with. Like if they feel comfortable ghosting you, then they're not really worth it. So let's get into like my ghosting experience. Did I get ghosted recently? Yeah, I did. Anyways, it was like the weirdest thing ever. I'm not really hurt about it because like I didn't really give that much of a fuck. But the re and we'll get into why. But I it was really weird, you guys. It was right we were talking so much. We had been on like a couple dates and we were talking for like a month every day, all day kind of thing. And it was like an hour before I hit a million, we're talking, we're having a great conversation. And then I did not respond for an hour, which is like pretty normal because I don't respond for like hours at times because I'm a working ass bitch, but whatever. And you guys, I hit the million and I'm bawling my eyes out and I'm doing the whole thing. I'm reposting on Instagram. I have my earphones in. I'm listening to Dandelions by Ruth B, okay? Because that's just that mindset that I was at. I hit a fucking million. I was an emotional wreck. I'm not responding to text messages. I'm just sitting crying, looking at my screen, so proud of myself. It was probably one of the best moments of my life, right? And then I text him back after I like whatever and he immediately I get like a weird vibe and it it was such a weird vibe he's like congrats on a million so fun kind of thing but immediately I'm like oh everything just changed which like this man knew I did social media this man knew I was close to a million which like I don't know it was so weird because it was like 900k you're like so into me but like a million comes you're like fuck that bitch anyways but that's just literally what happened and then like the day after we had a couple conversations and then we just like nothing we just stopped talking in general. And I was like, okay, wait, like I literally just got ghosted. But I thought it was so weird that I got ghosted right when I hit a million. That's when I was like, okay, that's fucking weird. When it's just in general, like that's just giving insecure bitch ass energy, which like I don't need in my life. But it's like, it's weird to me to think that like everything was all dandy and good at 900K. But like once Livy hit the million, it's like, I got to get the fuck off. It's so weird anyways. So yeah, like I did recently get ghosted 
And I, there's really just, I'm like, if you're going to ghost me, then I probably don't want you in my life. Like, I'm never going to beg somebody to stay in my life because I have an amazing life. So why the fuck am I going to be like, oh my God, like I need you in my life when I don't. If you're showing me you're a weak ass immature bitch, I'm going to let you be a weak ass immature bitch, but you're not going to do it in my life. So like, get the fuck out. And that's just that. Let's get into, let's get into first dates. Okay, first dates. Listen. We all get first date nerves, right? That's just a thing. That just happens. But the way that I go about getting first dates nerves is I take a Xanax. No, I'm kidding. I walk in that date and I'm like, I'm the hottest, most gorgeous. I am so beautiful. I'm so amazing. Yes, I say these things to myself because I deserve to hear it. I'm so amazing. I'm so fucking gorgeous. This man is so lucky that I am spending my Thursday night sitting across from him with a plate of salmon sushi in front of my fucking face. Like, he is so lucky to even be on a date with me. He is so lucky that I am putting my energy into seeing him. Like, if you're not walking into your first dates like, I'm the hottest bitch this man or woman will ever fucking meet, then you're doing it wrong, okay? That's how we get over the first date nerves. It's like, hype yourself up. Like, be like, I'm that bitch. And they're so fucking lucky to be on a date with me because they are. Like, you're amazing. They're so lucky to be with you and even, like, going on a date with you. Why would you think anything less about yourself like that? Like, why would we be negative and thinking horribly to ourselves before dates? I don't like a first date. I've never liked a first date, but I realize that I have to do them if I want to meet people. And... Yeah, but I'm always like before my first dates, like I'm literally walking out the door like this motherfucker is going to have the best night of his life. And even if he doesn't, he's so lucky he even got to sit across from me. OK, not everybody gets this privilege. Not everybody gets my energy. Look how lucky he is. You know what I mean? So that's like the energy I like to bring into my first dates. Like I'm gorgeous. I'm amazing. And they're so lucky to be out with me because I don't have time to say anything rude or negative about myself. I'm not going to ever do that, especially going into a first date when there's nerves. You're already a little bit nervous. It's like, no, fuck that. He's so lucky to even like spend time with you. So that's my thought going into like a first date. And I highly recommend that for all of you guys of like, just be confident as ever and be like, you know what? He is so lucky to be on a date with me right now. Like so fucking lucky. So I highly recommend doing that. Also, here's where we need to adjust our standards. If he's not taking you, he or she, they, them, you know, I don't really care. I'm just going to say he because I unfortunately like men. So if he, she, they, them is not taking you to dinner on a first date, red flag, dinner or drinks or something like a little bit active, that's a red flag. We're not going to hang out on your couch, Tommy. That's not a first date. Like you bringing me a bottle of wine to hang out and chit chat on my bed, not a first date. If you're not taking me out, picking up that bill, that is not a first date. Like, I'm not going to do that. If your idea of a first date is us hanging out and drinking wine in your apartment, that's what I do with my girlfriends. What the fuck makes that so special that I could just do like what makes that a date that's not a date if you want to be friends I'll treat you like a friend if you're going to give me friend ideas and be like let's just you know grab a bottle of wine and like hang out in my apartment okay then you're going to be a friend to me and I'll treat you like a fucking friend because that's what I do with my girlfriends but like if they're not taking you to dinner drinks or even like an activity on a first date then what the fuck are you doing don't go on that date don't waste your time I saw a really good TikTok where a girl was like if they're asking you on a coffee date for a first date, fuck that. That's all that you're worth to them is a cup of coffee. Like, that's it. That just feels, that's just not enough for me. That's just not going to cut it for me. Those are where my standards are. That's where my boundaries are. That's just that. So I stand by that. Like, if you're not doing something where they're taking you out, that's not a date. That's you just hanging out with them. Like, forget it. And I don't want to hang out with you because, like, chances are you're just trying to fuck me. And then it's like, okay, cool. Like, I don't really want to fuck you like that. So that's not a first. And don't let yourself get caught up into that either. Because that just shows, like, they're not a gentleman. And you don't want to be with someone like that long term that's like, hey, let's just, like, hang out, grab a bottle of wine. And then they'll make the – no, trust me, because they'll make the fucking excuses that are like, I just think first dates are so formal and so awkward. So I thought it would be a better idea just to, like, hang out in your bed and, like, get to know you over, like, a glass of, like, $10 bottle of wine I picked up from Target on the way here. Like, I just thought that was so much cooler than, like, you know, going to dinner. And, no, in reality what he's saying is – 
I don't really want to spend money on you like that because I'm just trying to fuck. And like, that's fine if that's your vibe, but don't, that's not a date. Like, that's not a way you're going to get to know somebody. So if you want to meet somebody and like you want to date and like do first dates and stuff like that, they're not taking you to dinner, drinks or something active. It's not a fucking date and do not go. That's my opinion. And it don't get me started. Like coffee? No, not a, not a first date. Second date? Maybe. Not a first date. I don't even take you that seriously if you take me to a lunch date. I'm like, eh, why couldn't we do dinner? You know what I mean? Depending on someone's schedule or something like that. But like, why aren't you taking me to dinner? Take me to dinner, bitch. And like, it is a little awkward, but I'd rather you show me from the start that you're going to respect the fuck out of me and you're going to be a gentleman than like just that whack ass shit that's like, let me bring you a bottle of wine, baby girl. It's like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I can get my own bottle of wine. It'll probably be a lot nicer than the one you got me. So that's that. Because I just, they're also, they're in... In this stage, they're in the, like, I'm trying to impress you stage. You know what I mean? So, like, with first dates and everything, they're trying to impress you. If your way of impressing me is bringing me a bottle of $20 bottle a $20 bottle of wine and hanging out on my couch, I'm not impressed. I'm, I'm not impressed. And I don't want to be with someone like that long term. Like, it's, that's just not going to happen. So, yeah. I kind of stand by that where it's like if you're not taking me out, then that's not really like a date and I'm probably not going to waste my time or my energy. I'm just not going to do that. I did get a man's response about first dates. Don't you worry. He said he only gets nervous if he's really interested. Dumb. (laughs) Someone he's interested in, he'll see what they like. Okay, apparently I was illiterate when I wrote this fucking podcast. Anyways. If he's not interested in you, he's not spending money. That's what um, my doctor man ho told me. So that's like the man's point of view. That was dumb. Anyway, <laughs> let's get into dating apps. I kind of hate dating apps, okay? But I do use all social media as my dating apps. So when I talk about dating apps, I'm talking about like Tinder, Hinge, Raya, those things, all those dating apps. I'm talking about all of that. So mainly Hinge. I really only use Hinge and I fucking hate it there. Just because I think it's so fake, you know, because like these stupid prompts. Like I hate the dumbass prompts and I just, it's always like, hey, how are you? And it's just like, I'm fucking fine, Brad. Like move on. Ask me something interesting. Like I rarely find somebody on Hinge that I like. Maybe I'm just a bitch, but I just don't really, I don't like dating apps, but we'll get into why I don't like them. I just think it's all the same shit. You have to be pretty interesting for me to like get off the app and like talk to you off the app. I think we have to have like a pretty good connection, like right off the bat for me to like want to do that. But I'm always deleting dating apps like every other day. So I'm just like not a dating app kind of girly. I'm the kind of girly that likes to meet men in the wild or on Instagram. I'm a big Instagram slut. You know, I'm a big, I literally love Instagram as my dating app. And it was actually funny. I was talking with my manager because I met my manager. Hi, Logan. I met, um, my manager for dinner last week and we were talking and she was like I'm so confused by what you mean that Instagram's your favorite dating app and I'm like wait let me tell you all about this are you kidding the reason I like Instagram is my favorite dating app but it's a little bit more difficult for me now than it was back when back back in the day but the reason I like this is because it's so simple I do the same thing every single time and it works like a fucking charm I see an attractive man, right? I look on his profile. Is he married? Does he have a child? Or is he like dating somebody? If none apply, I do the three picture liking thing, which is I go and I like three pictures, right? If they're interested, which is 99.8% of the time, they will do the three picture like back, okay? You could be like, this is immature. This is so dumb. What? I-. It works, bitch. It works. That's all you need to know. And then usually someone starts following them right now. I don't follow. Like at this point of my life, I guess, I don't know why I don't follow. I'll tell you exactly why I don't follow. And we'll get into that in a second because that's embarrassing. But I'm not going to follow you. We'll probably have the DMs are going to start. Either they slide up on a story or they just slide straight into the DMs. Or even I'll be bold enough and I'll be like, oh, let me slide into the DMs. Because obviously we're interested in each other if we're doing this back and forth kind of thing. Because after they like three, like, I don't know if I said I'll go back and like another couple or something like that. And then I'll just slide in the DMs or something along that line. And then or they'll follow Something like that happens. And then we have a conversation. The reason I like Instagram is because I get to see this person in all aspects of their life. I get to see who they're following. I get to see what they what their weekends look like. If they have like story highlights and stuff like that. And if I'm seeing, 
you're in the club 24 7 next you know it's just a really personalized version of like my own little dating app and I don't you just like find these men on there and I get to see like do you have a girlfriend are we hiding anything I get to search your account you might be like this is a little bit stalkerish I don't give a fuck I'd rather know right that right now rather than six months in if you have a girlfriend anyways you just get like a way better idea of this person's life and I really really like that so Instagram is my favorite dating app. And don't be scared to slide in the DMs. Like, slide in those fucking DMs. I like to slide in the DMs here and there. Normally, I try and set them up for them to slide in my DMs. But, yeah, whatever. And then I did mention that I don't follow them. Because, okay, I fucked up one time. (laughs) This is so awkward to admit. I don't like this. But one time, good thing the podcast is for the girlies. One time I was on Hinge and you know how guys have their Hinge, uh, their Instagram on their Hinge like everybody does. So I went and I looked at his Instagram. I saw one of his friends comment on his post and I like clicked on that guy's profile and I was like, oh, this motherfucker is so cute. So I did the three picture like thing. He did it back to me, slid in the DMs immediately. We started talking, right? He, I'm Somehow we're talking so much that I'm like, come to New York, like come visit me, which I really don't say to many people. So I'm like, how did I get here with this man? Anyways, I end up matching with the man who... I matched with on Hinge where I found his friend. First of all, creepy stalkery of me. Cool. I don't care. Anyways, but I matched with his friend and then I started like texting his friend and I was like, I can never give his friend the one who I matched with on Hinge that I found his other friend through. I can never give him my Instagram because he's going to be like, why are you following one of my best friends? And if he asks one of his best friends, hey, why are you following her? And he's like, I don't know. She just, you know, is in my DMs. We're talking about me visiting New York. I look like the biggest homie hopper in the world. I just wasn't expecting to match with that one man on Hinge. Like I really wasn't. So I was like, whatever. Me and the me and the best friend got acquainted, but me and the other friend, yeah, I was like, honestly, it was me and all the friends together. Like, it really was like a whole triangle. Kid you not, at one point I was texting them both at the same time, and they probably had no fucking idea is what it is. Love you, boys. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, I just think you get a way better idea of somebody through their Instagram. Yeah, look at like their tag photos, people they follow, their highlights, all of it. You get such a good idea because we post all of our lives on Instagram. Everyone's like, Instagram's a highlight reel. Yeah, regardless, I'm seeing your life, okay? And that's all I need to see. Whereas Hinge, I don't get that, you know? I don't get to see the five bitches commenting under your photo. I don't get to see that. You know, I just get a way better idea of that kind of person from their Instagram than I ever would their hinge. Like, because if we're being honest, hinge is the real highlight reel. Instagram, I'm getting way more than just like your highlight reel. So yeah, I don't know. I think if you really want to get to know somebody a little bit better, stalk the fuck out of their Instagram. And there is no shame in that because I do it. And you're like, you're crazy. I don't give a fuck. Okay, anyways, let's talk about how to have high standards while dating. (laughs) See, I'm trying to drink more water these days. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to get that video back and edit it and be like, what the fuck? I'll probably keep it in for the YouTube girlies because like I love the YouTube girlies and I like to give you like a little something special. Um, You're like, bitch, what was that? Anyways, let's talk about how to have high standards while dating. (sighs) I got nervous for a second. I don't know why. Anyways, I do this with my therapist and I love to do this. Well, okay, a year and a half ago, we did this where we made a list of my non-negotiables. Like these are my deal breakers while dating. So if I meet a guy, I start talking to them and we go on a date. These are things that are non-negotiables for me. And this person has to mark off at least 80% of this list. So I'll read you the list and then we'll get into how you're going to make your list. Okay. And it's changed a little since moving to New York because life's just a little bit different here and all those things. So first things first. Okay. This laptop, why is it so fucking slow? Anyways, first things first, they have to pay for the bill on the first date. They have to be successful. I'm not talking about billionaires. So like, don't come for me, but like they have to be successful and what they, they just have to have a fucking job. Honestly, um, passionate about something. I don't want to hear about your work 24 seven. I feel like you should have something other than your work that like you're passionate about. Like I have my work, but I also have like comedy that I'm passionate about, but I guess those go hand in hand. 
God, this, this list I'm reading it right now, it's like bare fucking minimum. Able to laugh and they are funny. Bare fucking minimum, you guys. Must have chemistry between them and like not forcing chemistry, just like I must have chemistry with them. They have to respect my boundaries. So if I say, no, I don't want you to come over, they are not pushing, they're not being creepy, which now it just made me realize one of my hoes was doing that. Anyways, I don't like men that smoke weed. I'm sorry. That's just like something for me because I don't smoke. So I feel like it's a really weird thing. Like I feel like if I'm with like a stoner, I don't think it'll work out very well. So yeah, I think I'm a little bit more flexible with that now. But like I, as long as they're not smoking all day, every day, I'm fine with it. But before I was like really against it. I don't know what I was going through, but I was really against it. Must offer fidelity. I don't know what that means. Um, open to or participating in therapy. I think it's the hottest thing ever when a man's in therapy and like likes to go to therapy or is even interested in therapy. Do not hit me with, oh, I'm going to talk to my boys about that. I don't need therapy. I got my boys. You sound dumb as fuck. Like you sound genuinely stupid. Like a man that likes therapy or is in therapy, I immediately want to suck their dick. I don't know what it is about it. It's the therapy effect where I'm like, you are 20 times hotter to me if you're in therapy because that just shows you want to work on yourself and become the best version of yourself and you want to heal those childhood traumas and heal any trauma you've had in your life. Do not be like, oh my, like if I hear a man literally say, oh, I could just talk to my boys about it. Like my boys are just like, why do I need therapy when I got my boys? Do your boys have a PhD? Probably fucking not. Like don't be dumb. And I know everybody can't afford therapy and stuff like that, but there is stuff like BetterHelp and that's not an ad or even like journaling or stuff like that. Like if you can't afford therapy, there's so many other things to do. But as soon as a man is like, I'm in therapy, I'm like, I'm wet. Like, no, that is sexy. That is so fucking hot because you just want to be the best version of yourself. So if someone doesn't want to be in therapy and they're super against it, I'm immediately like, ick, get out of my face. Like, I don't like that. Like, you're just being immature. And I think there's a certain, certain type of emotional intelligence that comes with men that are in therapy. And it's the sexiest thing I've ever seen. Like, that is just something like, I will draw. You think buying bottles at the club is going to make me draw my panties for you? No. Tell me you're in therapy and I'm going to slut myself out to you. Swear to God. Anyways, fearless about life. Once again, I don't know what that means. Um, must live in own space. Okay, now I'm a little bit more lenient because I live in New York City where rent is literally $5,000 per person. But I do like a man that lives alone. This was mainly because in Chicago I was living alone. So it was really weird for me to have these men who were had roommates and they were like 30 years old. But like I'm just this like 22 year old with like my own apartment and stuff. I don't know. I just really wanted someone with like their own space and stuff. Like, I think I just wanted someone who didn't live at home. That's what it comes down to. Or I always say if you're like above 30 years old, you probably shouldn't be living with anybody. You should probably live alone at that point of your life. That's just my opinion must have decent friends who I feel comfortable with. Yeah, I don't want you to have weird fucking friends. Anyways, must not be passive aggressive. Duh. And the pace of the relationship must ma must match my paces and wishes. And his world cannot be miles apart from my world, which just kind of means like we can't have like vastly different worlds in the sense that like I'm working 24 seven, but you're doing nothing. You know what I mean? Or something like that where I just want our worlds or like, you go out 24 seven and I don't really go out that much. Like I want there to be like a balance where I can like create a life with this person. Cause I feel like I'm at that age, not even at that age, but like when you get in a relationship, it's just like, I want to be able to create a life with this person and it shouldn't feel so separate and weird. But the reason I set this list is cause I'm uh, weirdly enough, you guys are gonna be so surprised. I'm a little bit of a lover girl. <laughs> that makes me want to vomit saying that out loud but I am like I catch feelings quickly I'll move quickly with things so like having that list my therapist is like having that list for you you're gonna make sure one you don't rush things two Livy that's not in love or getting love bombed knows what she wants and like you're following that kind of thing so I think it's really important to set a list of boundaries and deal breakers that you have for these men not only this list I think it's important to have a list of 60 qualities that you see in your future partner and don't settle until like at least 80 percent of that list is full but like you should have your non-negotiables and you should have things in dating that are deal breakers to you and that you don't want to deal with right I think that's so normal and I think that's really what's going to help you have those high standards while dating. Because I look at this list and a lot of the people that I've dated do not follow this list or like aren't with this list. And that's probably why I got myself into like a little bit of sticky situations. But I think it's important to have boundaries while dating, you know, and 
not give so much of yourself up front immediately. And that's coming from me, which like I definitely do that. You know what I mean? So it's like there there it comes. This list helps a lot with that. If you're like me and you are a little bit, you rush a little bit anyways. Yeah, like this list also, it changes a little bit, but I just feel like don't settle on your deal breakers. I say this, I don't know why I say this every podcast, but I truly mean this. Like I've built an amazing life with like, I genuinely love my life. I love my job. I love my friends. I love my family. I'm not going to bring somebody into my life that's not going to add to my life. Okay. I'm not going to bring somebody into my life who's just causing me stress or causing me distress in any sort of way. No, like if I have a happy, amazing life as is, why am I going to bring in a motherfucker who stresses me out? Absolutely not. Like I am good. So That's just that. That's exactly why I have the list. So I make sure I'm not bringing in a whack ass motherfucker and I'm setting those boundaries for myself. And I'm just not getting attached as easily because I definitely do get attached very quickly up front. And then I'm like, I don't, why am I fucking with this person? Like my ex boyfriend, I'm like, why did I, why did we last as long as we did? Like I literally only liked him for the dick and like I stayed because I thought I had to be with this person. You know what I mean? So like the list is for those reasons because he didn't fall no he followed like none of this list besides like paying for shit and that was it and then the list of like 60 qualities for somebody that I made no he didn't follow that list either so that's why we got to follow our list ladies so we don't end up with whack-ass motherfuckers I don't know what that was anyways let's talk about situationships fuck a situationship ew like what is a situationship a situationship is normally I feel like for the man or whoever's idea it is to be in a situationship for that person to not have to commit so they get the best of both worlds you're seeing them all the time you're probably fucking them all the time you're going on dates you're basically dating right and this is what I talk about when I hate the generation of dating that we're in because we do situationships it's so beyond dumb to me so you're in a situationship they're fucking you you're going on dates you're doing all these things you're basically dating but they get the pass to do whatever they want with anybody else because of the title that you guys are in a situationship what fucking sense does that make absolutely none so i will not do situationships i think they're absolutely pointless you're get, like it's just if a man suggests a situationship he's getting his cake and he wants to eat it too you know what i mean like so he's getting you but he's also getting all these other bitches and you can't get mad because you're not officially dating but you're a situationship like it's so not worth it and a real man and someone who's really interested in you will commit to you they won't suggest a situationship because they'll actually take you seriously and be like hey i want to be with you they're not going to like pull this dumb shit you know what i mean where it's like Oh, like I'm just not ready yet. If you've been doing this more than two months and they say they're not ready yet, fucking leave. They're never going to be ready. But the longer you stay around, the longer you're showing them that you're willing to be treated like shit. Because honestly, if you're accepting a situationship from anybody, why? Like genuinely ask yourself, what are you doing? Oh, because you like him? Oh, congratulations. I'm sure you do or else you wouldn't be in this like situation with them. So I just really, I'm not for a situationship. I think it's the dumbest thing ever personally because you're just giving them, they can do whatever the fuck they want. Like when I was in, also like I've been in situationships where it's like we're only fucking each other, we're only seeing each other and then it's like at the same time, but we're not like exclusively, we're not in a relationship. I also think was really dumb because it's like, so we never see a relationship with each other which we didn't so it's like what the fuck are we doing we're just bored you know and then when I wanted to open the situation ship up and be like all right like if we're not going to do anything long term I'm going to start fucking whoever I want like I'm young gorgeous beautiful I'm going to start fucking whoever I want he was like absolutely not Livy we're we're done we're done and it's like see so there is that's why I'm like they're just stupid like there's no reason for a situation ship I really don't get it but yeah I think you completely lower your standards when you accept a situation ship for yourself it's not a hard thing to commit to somebody and like I think of the situation ship I was in the reason it wasn't a relationship was because I didn't want to commit to that person because I didn't want that person in my life long term As harsh as that sounds, like, I didn't want to date this person. I just didn't want to – they just weren't what I saw for myself in the future. I I feel like I have a pretty clear vision of, like, what I can see myself with in the future. And, like, that wasn't fair to them. That wasn't fair to me. And it's a really hard position to be in because I'm getting feelings for you – I'm getting deeper in this, but I know long-term I don't want this. And I know long-term you don't want this either. So what the 
fuck are we doing? You know, it's just kind of one of those things. So that's why I'm like, I'm really against situationships. Either you commit or you don't. I'm a very much like zero or a hundred percent person. And I feel like that's kind of how it should be with dating. Cause like the 50% is where we get those situationships. So if you're just like 50%, not like zero to a hundred, that's where you get in the rocky waters of situationships. And those can last for years. And you just don't want to put yourself through that for years. Like wondering where you stand with somebody. Absolutely fucking not. Or even like holding on to somebody just because it's comfortable and just because it's comfortable and you have some sort of feeling but not enough feeling to make things last for a while it's not fair to anybody so I just honestly I think they're dumb as fuck and I don't think anybody should be doing situationships and that's my opinion all right you guys that was dating in 2023 I have no idea what I'm titling the podcast yet but that is it for this week's episode you guys let me know what you thought let me know studio wise what we're thinking what we're feeling you know I want your opinions make sure to rate the podcast five stars everywhere you're listening to it if you're on YouTube hi my YouTube girlies leave a comment you know I love I answer all your comments or at least I try to I'm really active on my YouTube so subscribe Yeah, you're going to, if you want me to answer you, bitch, go to my YouTube. Anyways, I love every single one of you. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at SheIsLivvy. And that is that, you guys. That's dating for 2023. Have a great day, night, evening, whenever the fuck you're listening to this. I love you. Bye. Thumbnail time, YouTube girlies. You already know. They're probably, if I'm like, I don't know why I felt about that episode. No, I actually felt good. Like, stop getting hard on yourself. I feel like I've been hard on myself recently. You guys, my mother called me today. She annoyed the fuck out of me. Um, Because she's convinced that my accountant is going to, like, steal all my money. And I'm like, well, who says that to somebody? Like, what the fuck? She should be so proud of me that I have an accountant. Because also, like, he's not cheap. And, like, that's my hard-earned money that I'm spending to make sure I'm running a business correctly. Business is, like, my new word. I love it. Sometimes business is my new word. Like, that makes me feel like I'm stupid sometimes.